Well, welcome to the next tutorial on how to build a transistor computer. Today we're going to focus on the essential part, the program counter. For uh, people who have seen the introduction, you've seen that in that version I used a series, series of JK flip-flops because of their toggle function. After thinking about it, uh, I thought, well, we can also use what we already built. The same boards in a different configuration will uh, make a program counter. Let's go back a bit. Last tutorial we built two things. Uh, the general registers and a program counter. A general register is uh, connected to the data bus and there's an in and out function. So we have A in, B in, A out and B out. The registers of the ALU look a bit like uh, general registers, but they are not. And the difference is that you have an ALU register A in and an ALU register B in, but the out is always on. So everything that is in these ALU registers A and B is automatically downloaded in the adder. However, the ALU register is similar to a general register, but with the difference that when you do ALU register in, you get the value of the ALU, not from the bus. If you do ALU register out, the value is put on the bus. I understand that this sounds complicated, but it's important to get the right picture into your head. Now, back to our program counter. Imagine if you use our ALU and put the value in one ALU register, A for example, and the value 0 in the other, then we get, if we load the end register, we get value 1. If we loop back this value back to ALU register B, then you get the value 2 in binary. So, in, in principle, you have a counter, but the picture is not yet complete. First of all, we need the ALU and the bus for other things. <coughs> and secondly, a program counter should increment one per single clock cycle, and this cycle takes two. I have to warn you, it gets a bit complicated now. But imagine we build a similar thing like the ALU, but with the one difference, that is the data select, that we can choose to increment on the value of the program counter, or jump to a completely different number. The data select offers only one to ALU register B. ALU register A we changed for hardwired 000001. So it increments always one. We make a separate bus for this unit. It doesn't interfere with the data bus. Now we have only one problem left before we have a program counter. That is that we need to compress it into one clock cycle. The clock cycle is a square wave and it's not so difficult to invert it with an inverter, a NOT gate. Then we have two rising edges per clock cycle. The first we use for the program counter in, let's say the result of the add operation. And the second one we use for drum register out or temper register out, select on or off then that way you can either jump or increment. Now we have a program counter that counts into one clock cycle. To make the building process a bit easier, I split this goal into two goals. And the goal for this tutorial is that we have a structure just like the ALU, with a temporary register, which goes into ALU register B, the hardwired 000001, the ALU and the program counter and a different bus and we're going to build the inverted clock. After all this uh, theory, uh, I thought it would be a good idea to see the end result. You see our two uh, series of LEDs. The left one is the program counter and the right one is the temporary counter. So on the beginning of the clock cycle, the value changes in the program counter and this value is temporarily stored in the temporary register, half a, half a clock, 
clock cycle later. Here you see the same thing in a higher frequency, 10 Hz, and you see that uh, the electronics can keep up very well. I'm curious how fast it uh, could go. I never tried it beyond uh, 10 Hz because you won't be able to see it anyway. Okay. Then two slides with uh, the description of how to connect the boards correctly. It looks like a lot like an ALU, but it's only 6 bits. Then um, I included some pictures of uh, the final build. Please notice the 8 line Dupont cables. That makes sure that you can uh, connect and disconnect each unit and it makes it also possible to uh, integrate the select part in the next uh, tutorial. The issue with the Dupont cables is that you have to uh, take into account what is the least significant bit and which is the most significant bit. For the clock you will need a NOT gate and I made a board and I included it in, in the repository um, but I will focus myself on an episode to make the clock I made the clock of a P-Pico, which uh, will send out an inverted clock as well. This you can do a temporary solution to see if it works, but um, you can also wait a couple of uh, episodes. Well then, finally I uh, show you some material of uh, the finalized project product, which will be uh, on your board as well as you, if you join me with building at the end of next episode and that is the jump uh, uh, function. First I uh, demonstrate it manually and then I demonstrate it uh, on automatic uh, mode. How it works is if you have uh, if, if you jump to value 5 uh, the adder still kicks in so you end up with 6. It's just uh, something you have to keep in mind. Um, well, I'm nearing the end of this video, while you watch uh, this manual attempt. Um, please let me know if I'm unclear or if I don't explain well. Uh, for me it's very hard to say um, whether you are beginners or much more experienced than I am. So just let me know what you would like to know. In the meantime, I uh, enjoy building myself very much. In the next uh, video I will have the base plate for the register ready. So things are progressing well here on this end. I hope you enjoy building as well. Bye bye!